remember the time I told you six Baby, let me lay down so you can fall back You can fall back on me Pour that, it's me and the drink till you call back Remember the time I told you six Baby, let me lay down so you can fall back Fuse, it's a pleasure um, Thank you, bro. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I like this drink, though. Yeah, this is Bamboo. This is uh, uh, a brand that's in 60 countries. It's a rum. We're yeah. killing it. It tastes so sweet. Like, I think I'll end up being wavy at the end of this interview. We'll Blessings. have to keep the interview as long as possible. <laughs> you trying to kill me. <laughs> Cheers. The series I do is called Self Made. It's all about uh, talking to people that have not only made it, but yeah. have had a journey to get there. Yeah. And I've had a chance to sit down with uh, uh, everybody from Rick Ross mm -hmm. to Yemi to yeah. uh, Nipsey Hussle to yeah. Post Malone when he was first starting. Yeah. And this is my first time in the UK uh, welcome, trying to make welcome. it local, trying yeah, to make it to special. Welcome to London. Welcome to London. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, I feel London is more open. It's, you have, we have a serious African scene here. Yes. Um, and I call it like the hub for Afrobeats outside of Africa, you know, because everything kind of starts from here with Afrobeats and then kind of this um, flows to other countries, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big community here, the dancers, the musicians, the entrepreneurs, you know, the proud Africans, we were here. <laughs> uh, you've been, I, I'm, I'm going on a tangent, you, you've been to the U.S. Yes. You don't see that there. No. Why do you um, think? Why do I think? Uh, it's, it's, I think... First of all, you, we have a lot more direct Africans in the UK, more than the US. I think with the US, a lot of black people in the US usually don't really know the exact country that they're from. Yeah. And the African community, in comparison to the other African Americans, it's, it's a small community. Mm -hmm. um, They're pockets. Think, yes, very, very, very small pockets. And I think there needs to be some sort of education in the African American community so they can understand that there's a direct link between them and Africa because a lot of them resonate with being African more than African. Sorry, a lot of them resonate being more American more than African. Got it. So I feel like there needs to be an, an education to link them directly to Africa so they can understand that you start, you are truly African before American because I think the term African American is, is, is more American or African <laughs> with them. And I think with just communication and with spending time with, you know, people like myself, they'll understand that they have a home in Africa, which that's where they're from. So if you were meeting somebody in the US, yeah. what would you want them to call themselves? Uh, if they're black, yeah. African, before even black. Um, because even the term black doesn't really make sense, to be honest. Um, it just doesn't. We're brown, you know. But I would say African more than anything because the term black disassociates African Americans from Africa. Yeah. Because, you know, when something happens, you know, in, um, in New York, you know, if one of our people get killed or whatever and there's a protest, we say Black Lives Matter. Yeah. But when something happens in uh, Mozambique, yeah. like currently, it's a lot of our people dying in Mozambique, all of a sudden, it's not really Black Lives Matter. But if it was African Lives Matter, it covers all of us. Yeah. You know, because people in you know, the US don't hear about what's happening in Mozambique because it's not to Black Lives Matter. Yeah. But if it's it was Lives Matter. It's yeah. La yeah. But if we, if we really started from Africa, which is where everything starts from, then it covers all of us, you know. So really, um, we need to kind of close the gap between black and Africa and realize that it's really one thing. We are all from Africa. So even um, like BET, Black Entertainment TV, yeah. it's Africa. Do you get it? And sometimes I feel like um, there's a disassociate between black music and Africa. It's, it's African music, yeah. you know, because we were taken from Africa yeah. and we should never forget that. And I think because we've kind of forgotten that and created that gap, you know, it's kind of disassociated them from who they are. Yeah. Because what you really are is you're a king, you're a queen. We had a royalty background. We were taken 
um, around 1619. It's been about 400 years since um, that happened. And in that 400 years, we've tried to fit in wherever we've been placed. Yeah. In the UK, I tried to be British. You know, I was born in London, but I grew up in Ghana as well. So when I came back to London, I had an African accent. And it was so hard for me because because people didn't respect Africa and they just assumed that we lived in the jungle mm. and we live in the, with animals. They didn't respect me as a child in school. So I had to fight my way through school. And also my main mission was to get rid of my African accent mm. so I could fit in. Because I realized that the perception of Africa was so terrible that I didn't want to be associated to it. I wanted to be cool. So I tried to be British. Mm. So all of us have tried to survive in the world that we've been placed in. Mm -hmm. African Americans want to be Am Americans so they can fit in, get your normal job, you know, mm. so you can survive or, or, or get a placement as an actor or whatever so you can survive. But really, if we all came together and we told our own stories as African, which is a royalty background, you're from a place that's a kingdom that has so much natural resources. If we manage to push this agenda of beauty and success for Africa, any American would want to be associated with that, so if you know with success. Where, where does that energy from you, where did that, when did that kick in? Yeah, it kicked in from being in, in the motherland. It kicked in from, you know, I had a, my first hit was Azonto. Yeah. And it allowed me to travel across Africa. And I was just seeing so much beauty, so many beautiful people, the way they were dancing, so much talent. How old, how old were you when you went? Um, this, this is even, this is only 2011, so I was about, boy. 2021? 20, yeah, no, I was about 20, 22, 23. Yeah. yeah, so I saw so much and I was just like, wow, I feel so cheated because as a child, I really did disassociate myself as an African. Uh, so I, I truly you wanted to fit into I something else. I wanted to else. fit in. So when I went back, and I saw the beauty. I'm like, why are they not showing this on TV over yeah. there? Why does my teacher not know about this? Yeah. Why, how come my friends don't know about this beauty? You know, the, the, the landscape is beautiful. It's good for your soul. There's so many opportunities over there. You can make money. I know you can make money because I know successful Africans in Africa yeah. who are millionaires, billionaires, you know, drive crazy cars, um, own crazy houses. And, and, you know, so I know I've seen it. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is new Africa. It's not the same. And that's how my movement was born. It was born through my experiences across Africa. I saw a whole new Africa that the media was not showing. So I was like, no, we need, it's time for us to tell our own stories. So I was doing that through my music. Whenever you see a music video for me, you see the culture of Africa. You know, and of course, music travels without any passport, but, without but any I find judgments. But I find it interesting because the, the song, uh, Asanto, yeah. did I say it right? You did, with an American accent. Yeah, I, I, I tried. <laughs> but we say Azonto. Azonto. I'm nice from one. Chicago, New York, so it's, a, it's hard. <laughs> um, but I found it interesting, you're not in the video. Yes. So the idea was just to standardize the Azonto dance because it was very complicated, um, you know, how it's done in Ghana. And I just wanted people to just feel like it belongs to them. Yeah. So they can put up their own videos. Yeah. That was the whole purpose of that video. And it did just that. Yeah. As soon as we put it up, people from Australia put up their own video. Paris. So many countries, you know, from across the world put up their own video. If you go online and you type in Ozonto, you see all types of people doing the dance. And it just went crazy. It's, it's, it's probably one of the most viral songs, you know, in, in, in Africa. But, but I, I've seen the video and you watch it, you can't stop watching it. You kind of want to see what's I know, next. It just makes you smile. And I think... But there's no... Like, that's the... I think the thought process to say, I just want to show the dance and with yeah. the faces and the mask, yeah. it's like, I don't know, is he behind there or not? <laughs> yeah, that basically was, was a little mystery behind it, who's behind yeah. the masks. And it was, it was an exciting time and it really did a lot for Afrobeats, you know? Did you, was there, was there one moment when you went to Ghana where you're like, this is, I get it? Was there, because you're, you, it takes me a while to figure out life. Yeah. <laughs> you figured it out at an early mm -hmm. age. I mean, I'm still figuring it out, but um, I But you have a passion. I, Do you yeah. see that? Yeah, no, it, it hit me when I was in Ghana and I almost cried because I think the moment was like, I've been lied to kind of moment. Yeah. You know, because I was seeing happiness, which to me is success. I've seen happy people and even the people that didn't have much were happy. So I had a realization of, look, I want to make music for these people. Yeah. 
And not just that, the world needs to know that it's not about, Africa is not poverty, it's not about famine, it's, we're not fighting each other. You know, Africa is happiness, Africa is success, Africa is talent, Africa is fashion. You know, Africa's uh, business opportunities, you know. I know because I've seen other, you know, uh, cultures in Africa. I've seen the Chinese in Africa. I've seen the Europeans in Africa. You know, I've seen the Lebanese in Africa. But I don't see Africans in Africa. So I had a moment that we, the reason why they're not there is because of the, what they've been fed. Because if you know, or if you've noticed, Anything that's shown on TV that's Africa tend to be um, let's raise money for these kids who are dying. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it yeah. Almost pays Africa to be a charity case, but yeah. it's not that. You know, because the same poverty that's in Africa is the same poverty that's in America. I've been to um, LA. I've been to Crenshaw. I've been to all these hoods in America, and I see poverty there too. But America does not choose to showcase that Correct. when they're speaking to the world. So it's like there's good and bad in every country, but why is it that they like to pick the negative from Africa and showcase it? It's because we allow them. So now we need to tell our own stories. So that's the moment that I had us telling our own story. But how, how, does, how, do, how does an individual, because most people I talk to, yeah. they're talking about their, their music, yeah. their profitability. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're literally choosing not to talk about that. Yeah. How does that? How do you? You went to me. You inspire me to want to do more. Oh, like I feel you. bad about myself. I'm not nah. doing more. <laughs> you're you're doing a lot. But no, no. But you're choosing to focus on not your the the revenue side of life. Yeah. Yeah. How does that happen? I think it's the why. You know why I make music. That's what keeps me going. Um, the why is I want to be in a position to help others. Yeah. And, and that's my why. I think whatever you're doing in life, you need to know why you're doing it. I think a lot of people focus on what. That it's more than the what. The what comes naturally to us. What you're capable of comes naturally to you. But why are you doing what, what you're capable mm -hmm. of? That matters more than anything. I want to be in a position to help people. So then I, when I focus on my what, it's because of my why. Together, so my why motivates me more than anything else. So, yeah. so how do you keep the corporate life out of that? Because they don't want that. They want you to focus on the yeah. on the yeah. dollars. How yeah, do you yeah. keep that out? You don't keep it out. You do both. Hmm. You can, it's possible to do both. I work hard. I do the music that I need to do. I do the shows I need to do. Like I, st I focus on my what and I kill it because I have to kill it like the next guy would kill it except I have a bigger purpose to mine. You just do both. You know, uh, I respect business. I respect business models and we have our meetings and we do it. But I also respect the purpose behind the business. So this, we can do both. Why can't we do both? So uh, longevity, two, three, four years, what, what do you hope happens for not only you, but kind of, to me, it's a cause that yeah. you want to achieve. Yeah. So when we started, you know, it started with This Is New Africa, the movement, um, and the album was called This Is New Africa. This album is New African Nation. So This Is New Africa was, you know, to create a platform to tell our own story, to change the perception of the world's mental image of Africa so people can feel proud. So that kid in me that came back to the UK that felt ashamed can feel proud of being African because you know, they're hearing great music, they're seeing amazing images, and it makes them proud to represent where they're from. So it's been changing mentality, and right now, it's about now creating a reality. So everything that we're doing now is, is tangible. So New African Nation, we're now a nation. There's so many proud Africans across the world. Everybody loves Afrobeats. You know, you have all these um, people collaborating with African artists. It's a whole new energy flowing right now. How do we use that to create a reality? And that's why we're doing a festival. People come to the festival and they get to see world-class artists in Ghana. But they get to see our culture. So then if they see something over in America, they can now say that I've been to Africa and that's not the truth. Mm. We now have more people fighting. Being a UK, you see that, oh, all they're showing is kids dying in Accra. 
No, I've been. I was at Tina Festival. It was amazing. Everybody was dressed like kings and queens. Mm. Now we have more people helping us tell our stories. Everything right now is tangible. So the festival, we now, we're building a school. We built a primary school. We're now doing a secondary school. Again, it's tangible. And that all came from creating that perception and, and allowing Africans to now feel proud of who they are. So now we have more support to be able to build a school. So when, when you got Ed Sheeran to come, yeah, but did you pitch him? Nah, it was, what? Not, it was nothing like a pitch. He wanted to come. Because um, why? We bumped into each other at a festival and he said he loves my music. I said, yeah, I love your music too. And then he goes, yeah, man, I love Afro music. I go, then you should come to Ghana. So that's what I said to him. He was like, yeah, I'd love to. And it was kind of like a joke. Um, and, you know, we stayed in touch. A couple months later, you know, he decided to take a break from music and he messaged me saying, is the offer still up? So it's pretty much like that, him just following up and wanting to come to Ghana. Um, I mean, at the time, I didn't even know, know the reason why he wanted to come, just the fact that I told him that you should come. You know, so he came, you know, we linked up together in Ghana. We spent like a week together and that's when I got to understand him. He's just a free person who mm. just loves good vibes and he loved the energy of Ghana. He loved our food, um, loved the music. I introduced him to a couple of artists over there, took him to the school. You know, he loved the school. He loved the idea that it started as an orphanage, then it turned into a primary school. And it's a school that's free for the whole community to come. So these days, disadvantaged kids who usually can't afford education now has a chance for an education. So he straight away, he contributed to us buying buses and building a bridge that connected the community to the school. He dived into it straight away. And to this day, we're still working on did the you school think, together. Did you think someone who's not African would have that same feeling that you do? Yeah, yeah, because I love London, mm. but I'm African. I love Miami, but I'm African. Mm. I love LA, but I'm African. So why can't you love Ghana? Because you're not African. Together, you can be Irish and love Ghana because of the energy of Ghana, good vibes, it's universal. Happiness is universal. He felt so happy every day. And he said it's one of his, it's in his top three countries. Um, I've heard him speak about Ghana so many times in most of his interviews. So if you meet, if you if you were in the U.S. and met a new artist that you'd never met before, yeah. whether it's Rick Ross or yeah. or Nipsey Hussle, whoever, yeah, when you talk to them about you, yeah. what comes first when you when you have that first conversation? Have you ever been to Africa? That's it's, it's, it. Really, the conversation starts like that. And then, because I really want to connect our people back home. That's my main mission. Do you understand that that's not, that's not normal when it comes to the entertainment world? I know, I know it's not normal. Um, I can give you an example of something that was crazy. Um, I was asked by Bob Geldof, mm -hmm. you know, to do the Band Aid. Mm -hmm. And you know Band Aid, I think the equivalent, you guys got Live Aid. Mm -hmm. And all these celebrities get together, we raise money for Africa. You know, I heard about Band Aid, you know, they have a Sharon on it. One Direction, I think they've had Adele before. Mm. Um, all these major artists from across the world are all a part of this thing. And I was asked by, you know, Bob Geldof to be a part of it. And the artists in me jumped up like, wow. Let's do this, this is good for this me. This is crazy, yeah. I can't wait to do this. Yeah. And then the why in me <laughs> just took me out of my body and just said, okay, <laughs> Why are you doing this? Is, does this align with your movement? Does this align with your purpose? And it didn't. So my purpose has always taken a lead more than my artistry and, you know, the excitement of being an artist and getting, going to the clubs and enjoying the celebrity lifestyle. My purpose has always led me. So then I took a step back and I realized that, wow, so this, these are the same images that I was watching when I was a child. Mm. When I was seeing kids with flies around their mouth, people dying and they say give two dollar a month or two pound a month this is the same thing i was seeing i cannot be a part of this because i know that in the long run it cripples africa because people wouldn't want to go there and invest in that country mm. or even just go on holiday to ghana or to um, uganda or to zanzibar it wouldn't want, make them want to go there because they think they're going to die mm. so they'll just give their two dollar a month and they'll just move on with their life so i started having all these thoughts and then i said but people go to Vegas and spend 20K a night. Mm. People go to Miami, spend 100K a night. But it's the same, we all have problems, but people wouldn't come to Ghana and spend 20K a night. Why? Because 
you don't think it's a place where you can have a great time because mm. you think it's just poor people and you might die. So in the long run, Africa gets shortchanged. Ghana gets shortchanged. We get two dollars. Miami gets twenty k. Mm. UK gets fifty k. Mm. But we get two dollars a month. Shortchanged. It's unfair. In the long run, we get crippled. So all these thoughts went through my head. And the artist in me was just looking at the purpose in me and just shaking his head like, are you serious? Like, you're going to turn this down? And I had to, you know, and it hurt me so much to turn it down. Um, and he couldn't believe I turned it down, you know, but the purpose in me understands why I turned it down. And that's how I live, you know, and I don't regret it. And I'll never regret it because I know I did the right thing for my people and for my soul. So... Fuse, what's, what do you have coming up? What's next? What are you focusing on? Yes, yeah, so the album just came out, New African Nation. Um, vibes, you know, it makes you want to move, makes you want to think. Um, it's, to me, I'm, it's my, my best work so far because I put in so much into it. I've grown as an artist. Um, we have some amazing features on there. It's such a pleasure Who to have. Who are some of the features? It's a pleasure to have, you know, a legend like Damien Marley, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's on the, on the first song with me called Brefier, and Brefier means come home. And he speaks mm. for the Caribbean in that song about you know, the sentiments that they feel as Africans, not feeling African enough to, to be able to come to Africa. So you get that kind of message in that song. We have someone like Steph London, you know, mm. who's, who mm. killed the song, me and her. We recorded it in Ghana. Of course, we had Ed Sheeran on the album, you know, who just give us different energy. And he speaks tree, mm. and which is the local Ghanaian dialect um, in, in, in Ghana. Kill that song called Bwame. Bwame means help me. And then we have Sarkodie, who's based in Ghana, um, a rapper from Ghana. To me, he's the best rapper in Africa. Mm. We killed the song together. So yeah, no, it's 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 a song that don't you it's think it's an album that has a song for everyone. I tried to, but don't you think it, it's the benefit of all UK, European, American artists to promote Africa, to collab with African artists? A hundred percent. It's it's very important because what it does in the long run is it gives you purpose for your life. You understand where you're from, mm -hmm. you get to learn about where you're from, and once you realize the power in your past, you'll be able to move forward as a leader in the future. So how did you decide to do the dolls? The dolls, oh my gosh, the nano dolls. Which I love, oh which my I gosh. love. So the dolls, we, Obviously, when you go into the toy stores, you tend to see white dolls, mm -hmm. you see Barbie dolls, but there, there isn't, you know, black dolls and, uh, or African dolls, especially with an amazing kind of dress that makes them look mm -hmm. royal and queeny, you know, so this is, this is for the kids to understand that, you know, they have royalty inside of them, but it's not just dolls that educational dolls. They're How did this come about? They're based on historical African women. Do you have kids? It's, it's, I don't have kids yet, but it's about, it, it was, you know, finding a present for like my nieces mm -hmm. um, um, and, you know, my business partner, you know, she's very creative um, and she's the one that actually designed these dresses. We, we were on a trip in Ghana and we just saw that there was no, you know, looking mm. for a present for our niece. There was no black dolls in, 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 in the stores. And then we went to Elmina Castle, which is where slavery um, began, one of the first slavery castles in Ghana. And um, we saw the story of Yasantawa, who's um, an, a, a Ghanaian African warrior who fought for her people in the Ashanti region because they kidnapped our king. But the men were too scared. It was the British that kidnapped our king. Um, and the men, the men were too scared to actually go and fight for their king back. So she was like, if you men are scared, us women are going to stand up and fight for our mm. king back. And then all the men were, you know, taken aback and gathered all the women and then the men joined them. So it was a woman who took a first stand mm. and, 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 and led a battle to go and fight for their king back. But, you know, this story is not shared amongst mm. our people. Our kids, don't know. our kids don't know that we have these leaders who look just like them, you know, and even... Older African people don't know these stories. It's been lost over time mm. because we haven't had our own media to tell these stories. Mm -hmm. So now this is our own media. You know, having these dolls, of course, visually represents our people, but it also tells a story and re it reminds um, our people where they're from. Well, I, I, Fuse, I have to say, you're, 
I'm sure you're a huge inspiration for your fans, and as a new fan, you're an inspiration for me. Brett, you're an inspiration to me. Oh, well. no, really, you, <laughs> you, you give me the feeling of uh, wanting to do more and wanting to find more purpose. And I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. But I hope we can actually, you can come to Ghana. Oh, I would love to. You know, that we can have some boom in I, Ghana. Yeah, I would love to. Cheers. Oh, cheers. cheers. Come on. To you. Self love and good advice, man. Remember the time I told you, say, baby, let's